Okay, so this is work uh, between me and I'm a, I'm a sort of political sociologist and three philosophers. Uh, I have a project at uh, the Institute for Future Studies in Stockholm, which is um, uh, on this topic, climate ethics and future generations. And it's a very hot issue in moral philosophy, how to think about intergenerational justice and what current generations owe uh, essentially future generations in terms of, um, uh, you know, what moral obligation we have to respect their rights and interests and, and potentially represent them and so on. Um, and this is highly relevant for uh, climate policy making. So from the IPCC report in 2014, um, we had this little quote at the bottom, you know, what duties do we owe future generations given that our greenhouse gas emissions will, will affect their quality of life? And this is really an unresolved question. Uh, among normative theorists. So this is me, an empirical researcher, working with normative theorists and trying, trying to get, a, get at this. Um, the paper really has three sort of backgrounds. So this first, uh, the first background is this moral philosophy question of what moral duties we owe to future generations and in the context particularly of climate change, but not only climate change. Um, and what, what we're doing in this paper is essentially trying to ask this question of the general public, of lay people. So this is something, like I say, it's a hot issue in moral philosophy, political theory, people interested in, in um, normative theory around climate policy, but there's very little research on general public attitudes towards generations who have yet to be born. And so we're sort of trying to, in a sense, compare the attitudes of lay people with the attitudes of um, you know, the philosophers. The second foundation of this paper is that some prior studies have found that uh, public um, environmental policy attitudes often correlate and uh, you know, some evidence suggests are, are effects of uh, political and institutional trust. So whether someone in a sense has confidence in the trustworthiness of major social and political institutions in their society appears to affect a variety of policy attitudes, including environmental policy attitudes. But there's, there's still a lot we don't know about that. And uh, to my knowledge, there's been little to no research on how people might uh, change their policy attitudes depending on um, sorry, change their attitudes towards future oriented policies, depending on their views of institutions trustworthiness. And in a sort of political science literature on political trust, the, the, the theory is that people's political trust affects their attitudes towards policies that entail some form of sacrifice for them. So if we think of intergenerational policy making and consequences for future generations, this should be quite relevant. And the third foundation brings us back to values, but in a different way. And that's a literature on environmental attitudes and pro-environmental behaviors that sees, in a sense, uh, environmentalism as resting on a foundation of altruism. So environmentalism is basically a, almost a personality characteristic or a disposition to be more concerned about the rest of the world than just yourself. So essentially the main question of the paper is, are um, support, is support for climate policy shaped more by values on the one hand, concern for future generations, perhaps a sense of altruism, or on the other hand, by beliefs and particularly beliefs about the trustworthiness of major social and political institutions in one's society. And in a sense, the, the, the alternative version of this question is, is humanity in fact failing to stop climate change, to take adequate action to prevent greenhouse gas, gas emissions because we simply don't care about the people we're predominantly polluting onto who aren't even born yet. So just a little more background before I get into the specifics of our project. Um, the existing literature gives us a little bit of insight but not a huge amount about how people think about future generations. There's uh, some research, for example, on discounting, including in economics. Uh, the merits, I would say, of those sorts of studies generally are that they, they, they give you a kind of quantitative estimate of what people's discounting rate um, for each additional year into the future is. But I think they also, in a sense, abstract from the world in some ways that, on the other hand, are a little bit of a weakness. So as you'll see, we're going to kind of ask people a bit more directly 
but on the other hand, our, our quantification is, is, is sort of quite weak. So I think there's just different ways of kind of coming at this question. Um, with respect to policymaking for the long term, and particularly in the context of environmentalism, um, there's some work in economics by Boyce, who I think phrases the point or, or articulates the point really well, that one of the reasons why we have pollution at all is that we can externalize our environmental costs on people who aren't here to defend themselves, i.e. future generations. Um, and we also know that psychologically, if you ask people about problems like climate change, they, they see climate change as having risks, but for people who are far away, far away spatially, socially, and temporally. Um, with respect to distrust, we have a very different kind of approach to public attitudes towards environmental policies. People don't have confidence in the public authorities to implement and design policies fairly, uh, to, to, to not waste money, uh, to not squander tax resources if we're talking about a green tax or so on. Um, and so there's a, a, a pretty clear relationship in the literature between perceptions of a lack of integrity honesty or competence on the part of policymakers and public authorities and, uh, and, and a lack of support for environmental policy action. If you have no faith in the state, why would you expect the state to do anything good, including uh, effectively to, to save the earth? So we have data uh, from short original surveys in four countries, Sweden, Spain, South Korea, and China. We got about a thousand respondents of uh, from uh, Ipsos web panels among adults in these four countries. We wanted the uh, diversity of, of countries from different uh, kind of cultures, different levels of trust, given what I've just told you and, uh, and so on. And we have some background uh, demographic data here you can see. And we asked people a series of questions, uh, very basically how much they think and care about future generations, their trust in some major social institutions, we ask about their support for a future-oriented policy, which can be either a climate policy or a policy of public debt reduction. And that can be either unspecified or specifically a tax policy or specifically funding for new technology in the case of climate change or cuts to spending in the case of debt reduction. And we simply wanted to see if attitudes towards climate policies in this future-oriented sense are unique, or maybe they're actually not that unique. And so we picked two different policy areas that are, that are quite different. We also asked people about their confidence in policies effectiveness, their optimism about future standards of living, and people's willingness to sacrifice for future generations. So what we're effectively going to do is we're going to correlate people's support, we're going to regress people's support for future-oriented policies on their concern, their subjective concern about future generations and on their trust. And we're gonna run a horse race. Um, we also have a couple of experiments in here, um, which uh, you can see here. We've got people randomly assigned to different versions of the question about policy support and different versions of the question about confidence in policies. So um, this is not gonna feature uh, particularly prominently in the results I show you, because this was more of a check again on whether the results we get differ depending on the specific way we kind of ask the question. So we gave people a bunch of different way, um, you know, forms of the question. And I will show you the differences uh, in, in people's responses to these things. Um, they are a little bit telling, but the differences for the most part are relatively small. And what we didn't find were any major differences um, depending on how we ask the question exactly and, and the patterns in the, core, in the um, regression coefficients that we got, as I'll, as I'll explain. And the final thing I'm going to show you as a result is a sort of crucial test to see how we should think about the relationship between people's beliefs about how standards of living, human standards of living are going to evolve in the future and their willingness to sacrifice for the benefit of future generations. So on the one hand, we've got this scenario here, scenario A, in which if you think people are going to be richer in the future, then you should probably be less willing to sacrifice for them because we don't normally make charitable contributions to people who are richer than ourselves. So if people's 
attitudes towards sacrifice for future generations predominantly reflects their beliefs about how rich those people will be relative to us, we should see a negative relationship between beliefs and willingness to sacrifice. But there's another way to think about this. They could be positively correlated. And if they're positively correlated, we think that's because the relationship is spurious, that trust in institutions would affect your beliefs about how the world is going to evolve and whether standards of living will get better. And trust in institutions will also affect whether you feel confident that any sacrifice in your own income or well being, in some sense, will actually yield the benefit it's supposed to to future generations. So the question is do we see a positive or a negative relationship between these two variables? And I'll show you. So here are the results um, briefly. We see uh, in response to our questions about thinking and caring about future generations that most people are kind of in the middle. Um, most, uh, a majority of people in all four countries do give answers above five or five or higher, for example, to the question about thinking about future generations. So I can't um, tell you a, a very clear message, but it seems like a lot of people are kind of in the middle, but we also see some variation across individuals. I don't wanna to make too much of the cross-national differences for any of our results because um, these are web panels and they're sort of representative-ish. Here's the distribution of responses to the questions about concern, which is the, an index of the two things I just showed you, the think and care questions, willingness to sacrifice and attitudes towards all the different possible versions of the policy support question. And People don't like taxes. They give slightly lower answers to taxes compared to everything else. People all seem also, at least among our respondents, were a little more enthusiastic about global uh, policies for GW, which is global warming here. Um, but the main thing I wanna tell you also is that all of these things correlate positively. So if you are um, concerned, uh, you're probably more willing to sacrifice if, and you're also probably more supportive of policies. So in regressions, if we run a regression one country at a time and we simply run a horse race, standardizing the concern index and the trust index so that the beta coefficients represent a one standard deviation change in these variables, then clearly trust wins. Um, you know, we don't know, uh, these, are, these are obviously observational results. These are not experimental results. So we need to be a bit careful about any causal claims. Uh, we make, but just in terms of the strength of the relationship, it's pretty clear that trust kind of outweighs um, you know, abstracted concern. Confidence correlates with the other variables as we would expect, and the patterns in confidence in different variables are sort of consistent with the, pa with the uh, uh, patterns in uh, answers to the questions about policy support. So that makes us a little bit, uh, gives us some confidence that uh, you know, people's beliefs about the functionality of, of institutions is in fact a mechanism relating trust to policy support. And here's the result of our sort of crucial test, which I think is the most interesting uh, finding in the paper. Um, so this is the part, this is the, the thing I showed you before about whether there's a positive or a negative relationship between people's beliefs about whether people in the future will in a sense be richer than us and whether we're willing to give a charitable contribution to them. And it turns out in all four countries, uh, pe people who are more optimistic about future standards of living are more willing to sacrifice, which is interesting, right? So they're basically more willing to make a charitable contribution if they think people in the future will be rich richer than us. They're also more supportive of any kind of policies. They're more confident about the policies and they're more trusting in institutions. So I think the, the, the general upshot is that scenario B is correct, that trust makes a big difference to these things. Um, here's this, the, the correlation matrix across the relevant variables for South Korea, which is fairly typical across the four countries. And what you can see is that in, you know, all of these variables correlate positively. Um, they're statistically significant, but the weakest correlation is actually between concern and people's expectations about future standard of living. So these variables are independent, more, a little, you know, reasonably independent of each other uh, for us to sort of tell them apart. So my upshot from all of this for you is that I actually think from a public opinion point of view, um, 
it matters, you know, in a sense, whether people are altruistic, whether they value future generations, whether they care about other people. We could extend this research and ask whether people care about, you know, non-human forms of life, people in other countries, um, you know, whatever. Uh, but I think it actually makes a very big difference to people's attitudes towards environmental policies, whether they have confidence in public institutions and essentially trust policymakers and public administrators uh, to do things as they say they will, to not waste tax resources, to regulate fairly, to enforce things and so on. And so if we want to really target what is holding back public opinion from being more demanding of better environmental policies, I think trust may be what we should have in our in our sites. And I'll stop there. <laughs>